Hello, hello. This is a presentation on essay introductions. Writing a good introduction for an essay is equivalent to making a first impression when you first meet someone. Just as you would smile, shake hands, and look someone in the eye when making his acquaintance, your introduction should also make an impression. You want to attract your reader to keep reading. Your introduction will also serve to supply any background information. For example, if you are writing about wind energy in the Pacific Northwest, you might briefly describe the region's history of energy production. This will give your reader some context. Most importantly, the introduction will lead up to your thesis. Your thesis is a statement or two that expresses your opinion on a topic. Remember, in an essay, expressing an opinion is essential. If we continue with our wind energy example, an appropriate thesis might be, although wind energy is a renewable source of power for Oregon, in this economy the state cannot afford to subsidize wind farms. Notice that my topic is wind energy in Oregon and my opinion is that the state cannot afford them. Sometimes a writer will outline his or her plan of development in the introduction. This is useful if your essay is complex or idea rich. Just one sentence describing each of the essay's subtopics will do nicely. There are a few common forms of introduction. You can begin with a broad general statement of your topic and narrow it down to your thesis statement. For example, if humans were truly at home under the light of the moon and stars, we would go in darkness happily, the midnight world as visible to us as it is to the vast number of nocturnal species on this planet. Instead, we are diurnal creatures with eyes adapted to living in the sun's light. This is a basic evolutionary fact, even though most of us don't think of ourselves as diurnal beings any more than we think of ourselves as primates or mammals or earthlings. Yet it's the only way to explain what we've done to the night. We've engineered it to receive us by filling it with light. In this example, the author imagines a world where humans are nocturnal, but then he moves from this general idea to a specific sharpened thesis that even though humans are not nocturnal, we have figured out ways to live comfortably in the dark. Another good tactic for the introduction is to make sure your reader understands the importance of the topic. Diseases like scarlet fever and whooping cough used to kill more young children than any other cause. Today, however, child mortality due to disease has been almost completely eliminated by medical science. Instead, car accidents are the number one killer of our children, and most of the children fatally injured in car accidents were not protected by car seats, belts, or restraints of any kind. Several steps must be taken to reduce the serious danger car accidents pose to children. This intro shows us the importance of the issue by describing car crashes as the number one killer of children. You can also make an analogy to your subject. Not so long ago, many of us resisted separating the glass, cans, and paper out of our garbage. What a hassle! Today, of course, every second grader knows that the world's resources are limited and that recycling helps preserve them. We act locally while thinking globally. It's time to bring the same consciousness to health care as we face a growing medical crisis, the loss of antibiotic effectiveness against common bacterial illnesses. By personally refusing or not demanding antibiotics for viral illnesses they won't cure, we can each take a step toward prolonging overall antibiotic effectiveness. This author compares recycling with antibiotics, saying that we need to bring awareness to our use of antibiotics in the same way we slowly became aware of the importance of recycling. A great way to get your reader interested is to tell a story. 
I was born and raised in rural upstate New York, but who I am began with a younger brother's death in a hunting accident when I was twelve and he was eight. I held the gun that killed him. But if my life began at twelve with my brother's sudden, violent death, then my end, determined by the trajectory of that harsh beginning, could easily have taken place a scant six years later when, in June 1965, I was kidnapped at gunpoint by vigilantes near the small town of Hainville, Alabama. You probably don't need me to tell you that this is an intriguing introduction. Or you could ask a question. Was it only 27 years ago? It seems like a lifetime or two has passed since that August morning in 1974 when Philippe Petit, a slim young Frenchman, upstaged Richard Nixon by performing one of the few acts more sensational in those faraway times than resigning the presidency of the United States. This author asks a rhetorical question, meaning he didn't really want an answer. He simply asked it to get the reader's attention. Lastly, let's try starting with a quotation. I feel like I'm part of this damn thing, Frank said. He carried himself like a large man even though he was short. A dead cigarette dangled from his half grin. I've worked with this machine for twenty odd years and now it's almost me. Don't you think the quotations from this man named Frank give the paragraph a warm and humanistic feel? Here are some other strategies you can use when writing your introduction. And don't forget, you can and probably should use more than one tactic in the same introduction. Be creative. And here are some things to avoid when writing your intro. First, don't make an announcement about the purpose of your essay. Let the thesis and the essay speak for itself. Second, don't refer to the title. If your title is Pollution in the Columbia River, don't start the essay with, this is a big problem because. Third, try to avoid a dif dictionary definition. While it is helpful at some point in the paper for you to define terms that your reader may not know, definitions don't make for a very interesting introduction. Lastly, never apologize for your opinion. Be brave in your views and ideas, and your readers will more likely be more likely to trust and respect you. This concludes our slideshow on introductions. Thanks for watching.